Hey everybody, I'm Julie Castle. I'm the CEO of Best Friends Animal Society, and we are here at the heart and soul of our organization, the Sanctuary, Best Friends Animal Sanctuary, where we take care of 1,600 to 1,700 animals on any given day. And um, through this crisis, the give you that point of contact and that point of solace and that point of you know consistency that we're here this is our sanctuary and we we want you to connect with us and make your own home your sanctuary and really enjoy some of the great stories that we're going through it is a beautiful day in southern utah but it's also very windy so bear with us as we My career I spent uh, working in television uh, in New York and LA doing uh, research, so analyzing the Nielsen ratings and doing finding out what people thought of our shows and things like that. Very number oriented, data oriented. Um, about 10 years ago, I decided to go to uh, back to school and became a certified veterinary technician. It's not different from a lot of stories that we hear from our employees here who had a previous job or profession. And then they end up getting to care for beautiful animals like Sheena. And Sheena came to us from New York. And tell us a little bit about Sheena because um, even though we have this area called Old Friends, it's not necessarily all Old Friends. No. Uh, right now at Old Friends, we are ranging from, we have a one-year-old, a uh, couple two-year-olds, all the way up to a few 11-year-olds and everything in between. So uh, Sheena is about 11 years old. As Julie said, she came, she was transferred from the Best Friends uh, New York uh, location. So she's been with us about two months. Um, she has some allergies and that's why she came to Canab. So um, we are controlling her allergies. She hasn't had a flare up, but we have to, she gets a special bath once a week. She gets some ear meds and eye meds. Um, we clean her toes um, every day before we leave. And uh, Sheena, as you can see, she, Sheena means queen of the jungle. In New York, she was queen of the concrete jungle, but now she's just the queen of old friends. <laughs> So, uh, so, so Tim, tell us, like, why don't we start rolling? Yeah. Um, what is this? What are we so doing? Right Sheena, now? she likes to walk, but she doesn't like to come back. Uh, she right. just wants okay. to keep going. Right. And she can be very stubborn. So, what we do with the caregivers or volunteers, um, we send two people out. One will walk her, and one will push the buggy. And then when it's time to come, turn around. Hopefully she'll start walking, but if she puts the brakes on, we put her in the buggy. She loves it. Um, we have a wagon. She loves to go in the golf cart. She loves to go in the car. She just sits there. So, so she, so the cool thing about her and being in this environment is that, first of all, I want to say that she is adoptable. And literally, it's an allergy. It's an allergy skin condition. And you know, on her paws and stuff, but she is adoptable. And, you know, my question for you is like, she is so, what a great, beautiful dog. And tell mm -hmm. us about, you know, if somebody wants to adopt her, mm -hmm. Tim, what do they need to do to make that happen? So with her, you know, her, her allergies are really under control. If you, if you just saw her, you wouldn't realize it. She, had, she gets meds uh, twice a day that control a lot of this. She 
takes her meds no problem. You put in a little meatball and she um, has no problem taking it. She's very good with that. Um, we have to keep her walking. Um, a bath once a week, loves her bath, no issues at all. So everything is very manageable. Um, and I think as long as you keep on top of it, she'll she'll be perfectly fine. We haven't, she's been here two months and we haven't seen any flare ups or um, anything come roaring back. Um, this environment seems to be uh, good for her. So, right. and what you may not know, she, uh, she was about 25 pounds heavier than she was now. Wow. So she's uh, lost over 20 pounds since she's been here. So that's why we don't want to only put her in the buggy. We let her walk as much as she can um, to get the exercise in. And um, she's lost a few pounds since she's been here, which is great. So. And, and of course, we have the space here. You know, it's a uh, look at the white cliffs. We're in one of the most beautiful parts of America in our Red Rock Canyon. And in Dogtown here, um, not just old friends, but we have roughly 25 plus buildings Different where buildings, we care yeah. for animals and take care of every need you can imagine. And it's just cool to see what we can do with Sheena, who may have otherwise you know, not been considered adoptable. So I think, how about if we uh, uh, take Sheena out and then we can explore some other areas sure. of Dogtown, especially old friends, and really talk about, you know, what it means to care for older pets here in Dogtown and in old friends and also um, medical conditions that these guys might have. So this is quite the... Uh, Quite the contraption. <laughs> she's very food oriented. Which is nice. Come on, baby. So here she goes. Oh, she oh. knows what she's doing. She's used to this routine. Come on. Come on. Sheena. So again, Sheena is available for adoption. You know, one thing, Tim, I'm not sure that we've mentioned her age. She is around 11. for our viewers that might not know what that condition is or we see that a lot with uh she's considered a senior dog obviously at 11. Um, we see that a lot with uh, senior dogs who may not be as mobile as other dogs so they're just constantly resting on their elbows um, she's got a really nice comfortable bed in there because um, we don't want that to get uh, worse we don't want it to start cracking and things like that so um, but it doesn't seem to bother her Great. Yep. All right, so Tim, let's uh, take a little tour and see what else we've got here. So right now we've got in front of us, we have two octagons, this one and this one. And Homer and Dolores are, you know, legendary and best friends in that they were literally the folks that stepped forward when we first started the sanctuary to offer to help us with our payments which back then were um, sizable for us considering that most of us were volunteers back in the day and so we've named two of our octagons after them and the cool thing about the octagons is they provide the maximum am amount of freedom for our pets but also um, it's just a great design because you it literally is set up like an octagon and you can house um, more animals in that setup than you normally would be able to so Tim, why don't you show us uh, a few other places here in, uh, do we want to in go Old inside? Friends? Yeah, yeah. Okay. shall we? Yes, uh, is that alright? Okay, so we'll Tim, her. why don't you seconds. pass her along to me and then why don't you take a little tour okay. inside and let's see what we've got. Okay. <laughs> okay, come on in. So this is our octagon. Um, we have six different ones here. We have you know some dogs live alone, some live in pairs. Um, all the dogs are tested to make sure that they're gonna get along fine. Um, here we have Tilly. It's very sweet. We just we just added a new dog to Tilly. 
So in any area of dog town, if you introduce a new dog to an existing dog, that run becomes staff only for seven, seven days. We want to be able to be here to monitor the interaction. Um, we're not here at night, so these guys will be separated. Um, whenever someone's here, they'll be back together. Um, and after seven days, if there's no issues, they stay together and live uh, pretty content. We have one of our volunteers helping out. Um, one of our rooms here is empty because Delio is spending the day at the office. Um, Can we go take a tour of the run? Sure. So this is Delio. Every dog has a cage card with their year of birth. Um, Delio hasn't been there that long. So in here, Delio, uh, we have a Corinda bed, we have a softer bed. If we have multiple dogs in here, uh, we may have to create one for feeding. Uh, even the best of friends uh, dogs, they're not gonna uh, eat together. So we always separate the dogs for feeding. We could have four dogs in here. Some may have to eat outside, some inside. Some may have to eat in the crate, like that. Um, and then most of our runs have an outside area. So a, a huge amount of space that they could run around um, and just spend, spend the day with. Um, if they're allowed to have toys, you know, it's a good, great place to play catch. Um, they also can see their neighbors. So we also, whenever we bring a new dog in, we have to make sure that they get along with their neighbors as well. Um, so a lot of space. And uh, Delio will be back in about an hour for dinner time. Um, but he's a sweet dog. So. And you can see our other residents here um, as this octagon layout. <clears throat> you know, it's so it's so good for us because we can you know, again, house animals in a way that really maximizes the space, but also it gives us an opportunity to be efficient internally with our octagons. And you can see that we live in a very wild place. We have a lot of sand that presents its own challenges. We've got a, a really remote area, but it's also incredibly beautiful and wild. And it provides our dogs um, the very best care that they can get and you'll notice these cement pads here up against the fence those are to help us from you know sand obviously is hard to run in if you've ever run on a beach and it's hard on your joints if you turn a corner very quickly so um, these cement pads are meant to help provide that stability for the joints of our dogs and so a lot of thought has been put into the construction of our octagons. And you've met one of our favorite residents today. And I will just say, you know, in the middle of this crisis, we are doing everything we can to provide that constant care, that stability, and provide you, our membership and viewers, with the fact that we're still here. We're still taking care of the animals. They still need our help. And I would encourage all of you to really think about your communities that you live in around the country. There are shelters and rescue groups around the country who are in desperate need of help, whether that be foster homes or adoptions or food. And so think about that during this time. It's a wild time for everyone in our country. Know that we are so grateful to all of you. We care about you. We love you, we appreciate you, and I wanna give a special nod to Tim for everything that he does on behalf of the dogs. And thank you to all of our best friend supporters. We're excited to bring you more from the sanctuary in the future. Thank you very much.